Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Abderazak Mofidi, a second year PhD student at Université d'Angers in France. The aim of uh, my uh, PhD is uh, to work uh, on uh, robust speaker uh, organization uh, under real uh, scenarios. And uh, today I uh, will uh, present my uh, our article with uh, my supervisor, Pejma Rassi and David uh, Rousseau on uh, wavelet scattering transform uh, depth benefit and application for uh, speaker identification. After the success shown by deep learning in many fields, mainly in computer vision, they were used in speaker identification for short iterances, task, and low sample frequency by taking raw signal or handcrafted method. These DNN methods were major, majorly understandable and interpretable at only the first layer. For example, we cite the work SyncNet where the first layer were sync wavelets uh, with uh, learnable frequencies. They observed that, uh, that, the, that the maximum uh, local maximum peaks were at uh, the pitch and uh, the two first formants. Another method that is uh, CNN row, it takes uh, the first layers, uh, they are learnable features, and they observe that the learnable features were more or less wavelets. A handcrafted method based on wavelets was proposed by Stefan Mala in uh, 2012 called, uh, uh, called Wavelet Scattering Transform. This method uh, has shown its ability to surpass CNN convolution or network and uh, under lackness of data at the training phase in particularly in MNET datasets, MNET datasets. Uh, hybrid wavelet scattering transform uh, convolution or network uh, has used uh, this transform with the CNN architecture for speaker identification task, but did not investigate uh, uh, the hyperparameter of wavelet scattering transform, uh, the benefits of these hyperparameters in this task, in uh, the task of speaker identification. So the problematic is how we, can we take the benefits from tuning wavelet scattering transform parameters for speaker identification task under short iterances and a low sample, sampling uh, frequency circumst circumstances. To answer this question, we begin by uh, an introduction that will be an overview of the article, then materials and methods. After uh, experimental setup and results with the uh, discussion, and we finish uh, with a conclusion and perspective and what could be done in uh, the future. Uh, so we start by uh, by uh, presenting the data set that our work was done on. MIT dataset. Uh, then we define what is wavelet scattering transform and its application in speaker identification. We showed with an empirical study on TMIT dataset that an hyperparameter of this transform can generate more invariant features that are useful for speaker identification. To compete the state of the art CNRO, SyncNet, and uh, hybrid wavelet scattering transform convolution neural network performances on TMIT dataset, we propose to make a fusion between the wavelet scattering transform and X vectors variant. At the end, we show visually the enhancement of uh, discriminant features when processing uh, a speaker identification task, uh, text dependent task on two speakers uh, reading the same sentences and uh, they are from the same gender. So what is TMIT dataset? TMIT dataset is a speech recognition dataset that contains around 630 American speakers reading 10 sentences with eight major dialects of American English sampled at uh, 16 kilohertz frequency. These sentences are phonetically rich, uh, phonetically rich, uh, a sample uh, an illustration of sample taken from data sets can be heard on this link.
So it's a short audio taken from a TMIT dataset. So for all our experiments, we pre-process audios from 462 speakers from TMIT dataset by deleting the silent frames at the beginning and the ending of each audio sentence. This pre-processing was done by SyncNet and the CNR row um, uh, literature. So wavelet scattering transform is a scattering cascade of convolutions, non-linearities, and average pooling based on wavelets. It was inspired by lunar architecture and wavelet transform. The concept of, of this method is to apply iteratively the wavelet scattering transform or wavelet transform, sorry, and modulus as a non-linearity function and an average Gaussian filter phi with a fixed uh, value of frame length called here the invariance scale generated from a mother uh, mother wavelet so this is like the dilated wavelet that will be generated depending on the uh, on the dilation uh, factor then at each scale uh, like here and here so this is like the first scale and this is the second scale uh, we apply like a convolution it's an averaging uh, sliding Gaussian filter that will average uh, the result signal pictures in frame. The output will be the concatenation of uh, all scales. But for audio task, we uh, for a voice task, we we uh, omit this uh, this coefficients because it's usually uh, null. So these coefficients are uh, called scatter coefficients, and they are local translation invariant and thus are more robust to reverberation conditions for example so these new uh, filters make because they are like wavelets they make uh, the transform more understandable and interpretable than cnn as we said in the problematic depending on the scale here that is i so I equal one, I equal two. The quality factors that refers to the number of wavelets uh, differs. Uh, for audio task, the quality factor of the first scale is set to eight, so it's here. To modelize the male scale, so narrow bands in low frequency and large bands in uh, for, for frequency more than uh, 1000 uh, hertz. Uh, so, but at uh, the other scale, it was like uh, the quality factors was uh, usual, usually set uh, to one. This transform, so the wavelet scattering transform uh, includes many hyperparameters such as nonlinearity, the type of convolutions filter, so the wavelet type uh, psi, the invariant scale of the or frame length of the averaging filter of uh, the Gaussian filter that is uh, phi. So there is the type and the invariant scale. Depth, the number of cascades that we have seen it was like I, and quality factor that is in the name in the number of wavelets per octave. So the author uh, Stefan Mala showed that uh, modifying wavelet type psi does not affect the performance in music or phoneme recognition, and proposed to stop at the second depth as the most of energy is absorbed on this scale as we can see if we track um, the path on TMIT data set so we can see here that like the two first order are large absorb largely the energy of the signal at uh, at the first two depths uh, so, for example, here we like this is like the invariant scale, and this is like the absorbed energy for each invariant scale and across depths. So, as we can, as we say, uh, we say we said that uh, at the two first depths, the, the energy that was absorbed is a maximum here. Uh, the invariant scale was always set to 32 milliseconds for voice tasks, usually. On the other hand, uh, Pejman Rasti I'll show in a computer vision task that going deeper in wavelet scattering transform is 
beneficial to increase the, the contrast between two different plants, therefore increasing classification accuracy. So at the best of our knowledge, the importance of depth and invariant scale of wavelet scattering transform were not investigated in speaker identification task, because as we said, it's just like uh, 32 milliseconds for the invariant scale and the depth, it's always, uh, it was always uh, at the second depth. To highlight the impact of wavelet scatter transform in variance scale and its depth on Timothy dataset, we use a different combination of uh, uh, of invariant scales and the number of depths to realize which structure best fits our data. Compromise, uh, in other words, compromise between classification accuracy percentage and the time execution. We started by optimizing the wavelet scatter transform in variance scale based on the dilemma time performance. We firstly worked on speaker identification text independent task for 462 speakers from TMIT dataset, sampled at 8 kilohertz and uh, 16 kilohertz. Five sentences were used for training and uh, three sentences were used for testing. So for audio, uh, for every audio, we extract uh, wavelet scattering transform features for 16, 32 until 100 to 8 uh, milliseconds, 28 milliseconds, in varying scale until reaching their maximum depth. Contrary to MFCC, we can increase the invariance scale without causing an information loss because at the next scale of this transform, of uh, the wavelet scattering transform, the loss is recovered in the form of frequency interferences. For this part, uh, for just like this part, we omit the silent frame. So for classification, we used MLP classifier with an uh, entropic uh, lo loss function. So we classify, we start to classify frames depending on speaker identity. But at the testing phase, the resulted softmax probability of each frame are averaged along iterance, the iterance source, and the maximum refers to the speaker identity. Therefore, the identification accuracy per sentence is used as an evaluation of the system performance. We fix uh, the optimal invariance scale that we found uh, in uh, this experiment. And we proceed the track of performance that is uh, classification accuracy per sentence across depth to extract the optimal uh, value of this latter for speaker identification task. So as we can see on A and uh, on figure uh, A and B for a sampling frequency 8 kilohertz, the performance increases with the invariance scale, but as there is uh, the constraint of time execution, we could see that the optimal invariance scale is 64 millisecond. At the depth side, we can see clearly uh, a linear uh, increment of the performance, so the classification accuracy percentage, until it reaches its maximum at the depth four. That is not the same as mentioned under the argument of uh, energy absorbance. On the figure C and D, uh, for a sampling frequency of 16 kHz, we observed uh, the same behavior as in 8 kHz, so uh, uh, an, uh, an increase with, uh, with the invariant scale. But at the depth side, we can see a slight improvement between the depth 4 and the depth 5, that is like around 0.29%. That can be negligible if, for example, we see the variation uh, from depth 3 to 4, it's more like from 4 to 5, uh, same from 2 to 3, etc. So as we can notice from these figures, we did not reach uh, the performances of speaker identification text independent on TMIT dataset offered by the state of the art and that are around 98%. Uh, so here, for example, 
the the maximum was 57 uh, percent, around 57 percent, and here 77 uh, percent. So to tackle this issue, we propose to fuse uh, the wavelet scattering transform and x vectors variant as follows. So we take the wavelet scattering transform of the first depth, then we feed it to x vectors uh, architecture, and the wavelet scattering transform coefficients that are uh, depths more than two, we feed it to fully connected layer, and then apply dropout to avoid overfitting. Then we concatenate, the, concatenate them, and we apply a temporal uh, mean uh, pooling, and then we classify uh, this uh, the 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 the. the, the um, the frames uh, according to the uh, speaker identity. Uh, so you mentioned that we always used uh, exponential linear units as a non-linearity and batch normalization. Based on the on the on the best result, the channel output that is C out of 1D delighted uh, convolution. Uh, was different depending on the sampling frequency. For example, for 16 kHz it was 128, and for 8 kHz it was 64. Uh, to 64. So as we can see on the table, uh, the classification accuracy percentage of our method reached the state of the art. So for uh, for 16 kHz and outperformed hybrid wavelet scattering transform convolution or network. At by uh, 7.557 on 8 kilohertz, we mentioned that the number of hyperparameter was far less than uh, the, 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 than the state of the art that was uh, 20 million and uh, around 1 million for for uh, for our uh, method. So we investigate the impact of the wavelet scattering transform benefit the depth on performance under the X vectors fusion. We remarked an increasing of the classification accuracy per frame. So here, like increasing the invariance scale can increase uh, the uh, the classification accuracy per frame. We specified that the frame that were fed to X vector uh, that to, to the CCN architecture were like 230 milliseconds with an overlap or 50 uh, with the 58 millisecond. So we remarked an increasing uh, when increasing the wavelet scattering transform depth also. Uh, this leads to quicker training, but in the other hand, decreases slightly as we can see like we when we increase the invariance scale, we decrease like the the accuracy slightly. The classification accuracy performance and induces early fitting. The optimal depth of wavelet scattering transform differs. So as we can see here, for like uh, for um, for eight kilohertz, it was we needed two depth to reach uh, the high accuracy. But for 16 kilohertz, we just need like the first scale, and we can get gradually the state of the art methods by fusion uh, with let's get and transform and x vectors. Uh, but the invariance scale was the same for the two cases, as we can see here 16 millisecond and 16 millisecond. The reason behind the superiority of this value is that it gives the TDNN the architecture to. Uh, the possibility to learn more detail about the wavelet scattering transform coefficient thanks to the temporal locality. To understand visually the behavior of wavelet scattering transform across depth, we performed a, co a comparison between the wavelet scattering transform coefficients of two women speakers reading the same sentence. For visual region, we max normalized uh the coefficients of each frame so we take like a for a frame we max normalize by the by the maximum uh, the coefficients of each frame the figure here is the spectrogram of the scattered transition at the first uh, at the first order the first depth presents two main peaks approximately so as we can see here it's like uh, mfcc so the first one is located at around 200 uh, hertz 
which represents uh, the pitch counter. And the second is around 425, that is uh, the first format. At the second depth, the invariant features are more enhanced, as we can see here. For example, a year uh, differs largely from one speaker to, uh, to another. So the invariant features, as we said, are more enhanced compared to the first depth. At depths that are more than two for, and for a given word, the distribution of long frequencies, for example, here, uh, for all, for example, or water, or for example, uh, in, the distribution of long frequencies differs strongly from a speaker to another. Therefore, uh, going, for example, depth four, it's the same. We, it's not the same like spectrogram. So therefore, going deeper generates more invariant features that their distribution along frequency depends on the speaker's identity. So to conclude, we have shown uh, we showed the importance of wavelet scattering transform depths and its invariant scale for speaker identification under uh, the shortness of iterance and low sampling frequency rate. We, uh, we showed that instead of looking the energy concentration at the first two depths of wavelet scattering transform, we should go deeper to generate invariant features. To enhance the classification accuracy per sentence and complete the state of the art, we propose a fusion between X vectors and wavelet scattering transform. And we, proven, we have proven that by increasing the, the depths, we increase the classification accuracy per frame. But at the same time, uh, we lost classification accuracy per sentence. Uh, in future work, one could further optimize the quality factors that are the number of wavelet filters per octave for high scale orders of wavelet scattering transform that we said that were, or that were uh, one for all uh, that. Uh, so thank you for your attention and uh, um, welcome for questions. <laughs>